tabula rasa. Yes, I know I haven't been recording, and I have a very good non-excuse for it. I've been lazy, to be honest. But let's move on. Uh, I am working on a video with the um, that Starfire. I am not Starfire comic book that's coming out. But let's move on. Uh, so recently we have this He-Man uh, controversy that's brewing up. Uh, and then, you know, this sort of thing bothers me, you know, right? So we have uh, Zaki, before I even start, you know, getting into this beef and whatnot, because let's, let's just set some ground rules. By no means, uh, if you go out and attack these people, right? You curse at them, you uh, insult them, you do nasty things, you send threats to them. If you do that, you are automatically in the wrong because nothing about this requires that level of um, vitriol, right? Remember, we're just dealing with fiction here, right? And even then, it's not like there's anything here that's um, going against someone's basic civil rights here. So low stakes, low stuff. And if you can't keep it civil, then, you know, you just, it just tells people, right, I would think, that you have nothing else to say on this because you're out of things, right? So here we go. Let's get started. So here I brought up my Twitter page, uh, or my tweets, and this is from Zaki Hassan who put out these photos, uh, Doomcock, ugh. okay, Masters of the Universe Revelation is a uh, Utter disgrace, a bait and switch by a bunch of cultural vandals that destroy He Man and Skeletor and Moss Man, leaving this so called sequel nothing more than the Tila show. This disgusted me. YouTube link below. Yellow Flash. Kevin Smith sets up Tila as the new He Man. Masters of the Universe Revelation mocks fans' review. Okay, and so Zaki Hassan says or tweets out do these people ever get tired of being outraged over everything right mind you all of this is just hyperbole but let's just take a look at some of the things things that people have said disgust is a weird emotion to attach to a cartoon watchtower database the amount of kevin smith actually hates he-man i've been subjected to hearing for the past few months just for being an entertainment YouTuber, I was totally expecting this. It's a sham. I'm impressed with Kevin Smith as a person, but this wasn't bad as a five-episode pitch. Uh, for folks' sakes, load these people onto the same ice flow with the Sportos who can't stop bitching about the Cleveland Guardians. That yellow flash guy did somewhere did a video where he stabs comics features. Wait, did they seriously kill He-Man? No, there's part two that's yet to come. In the same way that Infinity War, it's like... Okay. So we see a lot of support for Zaki Hassan, right? Um, let's just move over to... Right. And he, he brings out these two. And I can see why you would want to bring these guys out. Um, You know, uh, these guys are known for their hot takes to say at the very least in the same vein as the quartering and whatnot but let's take a look at someone else real quick uh let's see uh, clown fish tv so clownfish tv right they've been putting out a couple of videos of um all this stuff right and these guys they're like a youtube channel they do do their hot takes, but they never get, at least from what I've seen, like, so to the point where, um, I mean, in, in many sense, this is kind of like what you would expect from a news channel, right? They put their stuff out there, they put the facts out, a lot of it's supported, and then they give their views on it, right? You take it as you will, but, you know, it, it's interesting enough, and, you know, they, the only thing that bothers me about Clownfish TV is that, you know, they keep saying, like, we have inside sources, right? And for me, that's like, okay, so you heard something from someone, right? But the thing is, like, they've been right more times than not regarding this. So, it, um, until proven otherwise, you know, they are pretty much credible. 
Uh, oh, this one, this thing, where someone <laughs> synced uh, the He-Man transformation scene to like some sort of um, Maho Shoujo kind of thing, and it's oh wow, it it's kind of scary how much uh, it matches up to the song. You, you can see it here if you want. And um, but yeah. So apparently these guys say they were real fans. They've watched the whole things, but it is what it is. And so far, I think they're credible as a geek, you know, news source, right? I find them a lot, you know, palatable than, let's say, uh, you know, the quartering, to say at the very least. God, that guy can't just shut up about, oh, it's, I mean, everything he sounds like, it's part of the agenda that they want, and, oh, the, you know, just the guy's fucking annoying to be honest but that's just you know my opinion but you know what's it neon and geeky sparkles i guess is the other one so there's all that right there but okay so this was so but the original points that these guys are all making is that kevin smith lied and from an outsider's point of view i don't know if i'm going to see the masters of the universe new version wasn't really you know the old version was before my time i know it's a pop culture thing but you know it's just not for me but from an outsider's point of view right remember i'm not a fan of this but from an outsider's point of view i can i would say that all of this could have been avoided if kevin smith didn't lie about being a fan Right? No one likes to be lied to, and no one likes fake authenticity, to say at the very least. Right, And you have to remember that for all these people and all their so-called outrage, it's not really outrage. The whole thing is hyperbole. We live in a world of clickbait and dramatic things, and thanks to YouTube and social media, everyone's kind of like the star of their own reality TV show. And what gets people into those reality TV shows it's the drama. So let's look at some of this drama that's been going on. And this is just with me personally. And this was just my view. That if Kevin Smith just said, hey, wasn't a really big fan when I was a kid. But when I got into it, I saw that there was a lot of potential. And I went with this. And this is my rendition of it, right? Just own it, right? Would have gotten a lot more respect. Be like, okay. Even, and, you know, because at that point, the old fans would be like, okay. Even now, He-Man has the power, so to speak. Right. So, oh, and again, I'm going to reiterate this. Do not attack these people after you see these, after you see um this. Don't condone it. Don't do it. You know, it's, it's not worth it, to say at the very least. But, okay. So, Janie Murdoch says it's not Kevin Smith's responsibility to make sure that adults behave like adults, right? And that in this day and age, even... That saying is, uh, what what does it mean to behave like an adult, right? But I'm just pointing out, this is me, that nah, it's just his responsibility to be honest, right? You know, because honesty is a good thing. If you weren't a fan to begin with, don't say that you're a fan, right? If you became a fan of something, that's good. Fandom should always be welcoming <coughs> Steven Universe. <laughs> Joke, by the way. And then she says, uh, no, I mean, no, it isn't. Even if you buy into the ridiculous notion that he lied somehow, just no. Here's the thing. There are YouTube videos, and I point this out. He said he wasn't a fan. YouTube has these clips. You can look it up. You can go on Clownfish TV. You can go on Doomcock. You can go on Yellow Flash. And they'll point out the videos where he says, hey, he said he wasn't a fan. And I think his exact words were, I wasn't, you know, the biggest He-Man fan or something like that. And so she points out, he said that he was a fan and that checkmate. Seriously, I honestly cannot understand how you're defending people getting their underwear this twisted over a cartoon. I don't know how you can call the reaction to it anything but ridiculous and childish. Remember, this whole thing, Twitter, YouTube, social media, this is all hyperbole, right? There, In some ways, a lot of them are just hamming it up. Right, but most of the time, th there's a core to it, and the core is this: Kevin Smith lied. 
right? He, you know, pretended to like it when he said he really didn't. Um, and then he said he made him. He's he was in charge of putting a cartoon about it, and most of the people were fine with him being in charge of the cartoon because guess what? He is in that nerd culture, right? So they felt comfortable with him, but. The more it went on, they started guessing plot points. They started guessing themes of the show. And they're like, oh, this is exactly what's going to show up. That it's going to be the Tilu show, which um, uh, the Clownfish TV uh, said way before this came out. I was like, oh, I hope it doesn't turn out to be the uh, Tilu show. But the art looks good. The transformation scene looks good until they saw that. Yeah. Um, And so they're like, we hope. They hope that they were wrong, okay? But apparently this gets all lost because, you know, this person is a fan. This is just, you know, finding your team, right? And she's on Team Hollywood, more or less. So, and this guy, Ed Sanji, said, and you ignored the second point, where, in fact, he lied about the show. And she points out, gasp, you're saying promotional materials were misleading? My God, someone stopped the presses. This is surely the first time in history this has ever occurred. The media must be informed. Like one thing, and Ed Sanji points out, one thing is promotional material. The other is the showrunner saying something directly to the fans who were asking, that's probably what he said, and lying. And her point was, and, and my view, again, I'm the outsider. Here, right not a big fan or anything so i point out if you get pissed at suicide one or suicide squad one you know the first one trailers and not this you have a hypocritical position right to which she says the fuck are you even talking about right so i point out well the movie is not that old but here's the cliff note version suicide squad movie right has a trailer set to queen's bohemian rhapsody which was an awesome trailer and thus fans were hyped but alas the, when the movie premiered and we saw that it wasn't anything like the trailer that's where a lot of the criticism started right and she points out okay what does that have to do with me or my supposed hypocrisy the trailer f for the first suicide squad did nothing for me and i had zero interest in it to begin with this is an example of someone completely missing the point, right? And I point out that, hey, I'm pointing out the similarities and criticisms between the two IPs in that the fans were upset and some do behave inappropriately because y'all do, right? doesn't matter which fandom it is. All of them have people that behave inappropriately because of the deception, right? And in Kevin Smith's case, the specific deception is where it got blown up was when he said he was a fan and there's youtube videos of him saying otherwise okay and this is again she missed the whole point right here okay but that has still zero to do with me my argument is that it is irrational embarrassing and childish for adults to get worked up over it see below for precisely how much i care about kevin smith lying behold the field in which i grow my fucks lay thine eyes upon it and thou shalt see it is barren right and you know what if that's her view that's her view right and that's what i say that is your prerogative and if a fan were to react to your views on this thread i am certain that they would come up with at least three conclusions one you're not a real nerd or geek. If you didn't know about the Suicide Tri Squad number one and how it went wrong, right? You don't have to be a DC fan or a Marvel fan or whatever. But if you're you're not aware of that, then it's just like, hey, are you even part of this nerd culture, this geek culture? No, you're not. Because, you know, this was one of the big things that came out. Two, you're self-centered. All the things happen, right? are about her and her feelings, and that is it, right? And three, she doesn't care about honesty, right? And, and, you know, that is it right there, right? They haven't contacted back. I'm sure some of you might be thinking if you watch this, oh, you totally owned her, man. No, it's not about owning people or anything like that. It is about the core of the argument, right? And the point is that Hollywood, right, if you were going to show something, right, doesn't hurt to hold things back, right? In fact, I think Hollywood talks too much 
about the shit they're working on, right? You know, it's you know they set all this up, and yeah, you know, it's just too much, right? They, but if you're gonna make something, right, and you're gonna do press and all that kind of stuff, just don't lie, right? Mind you, Hollywood isn't the organization where stuff like this is going to be properly. How do you say um, vetted? Or question about, I mean, Hollywood press journalism is, you know, just full of paparazzi and people who just want to get famous, more or less, right? Or just be a part of that fame culture. And that fame culture, as we can tell from Britney Spears, I mean, almost every Hollywood actor or actress, and this is me being hyperbolic here, just so, but there is too many people who are involved with Hollywood that leave broken to which that you should be comfortable with right britney spears and free britney movement oof that was just no that's not good uh johnny depp and amber heard right two very toxic people and ugh, right so and the whole point about this the main thing about this it's about honesty right that's the whole thing right if they if he was just honest then none of this would have happened or at least it wouldn't have gotten at as big as it did right and you know that's not what happened you know i think this person if i can find it maybe i can notification da 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 all right here it is also said uh something about Okay, so right here, ignore the second point. Good for you. So she doesn't care. She's not eight years old. I got better things to do than to get super angry about cartoons over the in on the internet. True. Now you're upset at people who are, you know, I mean, is that any now that now that I'm looking at this, isn't this a little bit more petty, right? Yes, yeah, someone had their nostalgia broken, right, and they get upset, right? childish to a degree it can be but you know she goes to the point where to point out it's like hey you know i am better than you because i'm not angry about this well if she was never a fan then of course you're not going to be angry about it she has no doesn't sound like she has an, any emotional connection to it so why should be angry but that doesn't make you a better person right and ed sanji says uh good for you but try to understand the people who is passionate about things like this they at least can speak it out, right? And, and if you're a proponent of the First Amendment, hey, right? If you don't like something, say it out. I'm not going to stop you. Her reply was, can you seriously not discern between passion and childishness? This behavior is not rational. It is not healthy. If you don't like something, you get on with life. Passionate fandom is not an excuse for this idiocy. Not really idiotic because, again, it's about him lying, right? Oh. I was passionate about He-Man when I was eight, but let's take a different example. Stephen King's The Stand is one of my favorite novels. Very easy. Was very much looking forward to Josh Boone's new adaption. Turns out I didn't like it. I very much didn't like it for a host of reasons. You know what I didn't do? I didn't go at Josh Boone on Twitter, didn't write about how my nostalgia had been wrecked, my childhood ruin, or that Boone had deceived us all. I was bummed up. I moved on. I honestly hope that Someday you can look back at how you're behaving right now and are just be embarrassed by it. But Jesus Christ, dude. And I'm pointing out, it's like, okay, hey. So she has something that she's been passionate about, right? Mind you, it's like, I, uh, whatever. Uh, it's the Stephen King's The Stand, right? And Josh Boone's adaptation. Again, I didn't see it, so yeah. Didn't like it, right? So if there was a fan of this right they go on josh boone saying say hey you know you said this 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 on your thing and i don't think you did this 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 right and if that's all they did on twitter or if they made a youtube video about it that's all what this would be and then if josh boone then went after those people which kevin smith did go after um clownfish tv on it kept bringing it up you know alluding to these guys and said, oh, hey, so-and-so made these videos about me, totally got it wrong, blah, 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 called them out, right? 
and got that Hollywood Twitter train moving in their direction, then that's this would be similar. But apparently her empathy is selective. And you know what? That's okay. Because guess what? We can't be 100% consistent or rational with basic principles or ideas. And that's just like stuff with freedom of speech, right? Whether slavery is good or wrong. Uh, much less works of fiction that people enjoy, right? And then her reply was, that is one of the most ridiculous arguments I've heard today, which given on the site is saying something, but you're at least correct in that my empathy does not extend to grown adults having a tantrum over a cartoon. Again, she, she, she missed the point, right? So, I mean, I think she also brought up Taco Bell at one point. I, I, I don't. I don't know where she did. Said it wasn't fanned. Da, 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 da. Let me see if I can find that Taco Bell thing. Uh, da, da, da. These are my feelings. Okay, so here's the other part. Okay, so promotional material. And, okay, that's not a good thing. But imagine if Kevin Feige told everybody that Toby and Andrew are indeed on No Way Home. And in the end, it was a lie. You have to be a professional and honest with the fans, and in the end, it's thanks to them that Kevin got the job, which means these people who make stuff out of old IPs, right? The only reason why they're getting money is because of the old IPs and the fans who support it. Her view, which is just dead wrong, is that, you know, no, it isn't. Kevin got the job because he and Netflix and Mattel TV came to an agreement and signed a contract. We are owed nothing. Barring you from actually contracting with the work with them directly, artists and creators are not beholden to you at all. If it was their own original creation, I would agree, but this is not their own original creation. This is an existing IP, which means everything that they do is because the fans support it. Right? Marvel would get no money if none of the fans went to the movie. Right? DC wouldn't get any money if nobody watched their stuff, right? Fans make these businesses run. You cannot insult the fans. They could be dead wrong, right? But you, that's when Hollywood has to be, you know, the bigger person, right? Okay, so, but Ed Sanji says, but the demands for He-Man exist because of the fans. Again, without it, they would not have that contract. And then he went and lied to them to the face, and maybe he doesn't owe anything to the fans, but that does not give him the right to lie to them, right? Lying is bad, right? And I point out, it's like, you know, she brought up Taco Bell, right? But, okay, so, dude, the demand for Mexican pizzas to come back to Taco Bell exists doesn't mean that if they bring it back without meat justifies people behaving like doofuses on Twitter, this bullshit fandom behavior of people thinking they are owed something needs to die badly. Again, I mean, you could read through this, give me your opinions and whatnot, but I think she totally missed the point. And the core of all this conflict, if you had to point down to one thing, would be Kevin Smith lying about him being a fan. And that's it. If he said he wasn't, then he'd be like, okay, Hollywood's going to do what Hollywood's going to do. I bet it's just going to be like another she -Ra. And that probably would have been that. Would some people still have blown up and gotten angry over him? Yeah, right? It is. But remember, this whole thing, Twitter, it's hyperbole. No one is so angry at Kevin Smith that, you know, they are throwing tantrums over this, right? This isn't Rick and Morty. And, you know, the Szechuan sauce at McDonald's, if you remember that dumbass who just <laughs> threw a tantrum. It's, no one's doing that, right? I haven't seen any videos. I haven't seen any Twitter. If you guys did, then you know what? I'm wrong. But at the very least, we can say that's not what the representative of all the He-Man fans are like. This whole thing is hyperbole. No one is so mad. They're just pointing out at the core, right? Because this whole thing's hyperbole. Everyone's doing that clickbait stuff that Kevin Smith lied about his role and his version of He-Man. That's it. If he didn't lie about it and said, hey, you know what? I went through some of the old episodes, followed the storyline stuff, and you know what? Tila really interests me. I think she can be a great new main character. Boom. People would have been like, okay, 
We see how it is. But hopefully they'll make it good, right? And that's all he could have done. If he had a different story, you know, it could have happened. But, you know, this is Hollywood doing Hollywood. And everyone like Zaki Hassan, Janie Murdoch, right? People, who, you know, even the Yellow Flash, Doomcock even, the quartering people and whatnot. All of them, are, they're just part of the machine, right? Trying to keep Hollywood relevant. And, yeah, that's all they're doing. So, so you know what? I think in the end, what can we walk away from this? Um, if you do have an opinion, right? State it out there. That's what Twitter, social media, YouTube, and all that stuff is for, right? Uh, just make sure you bring your receipts. You know, if you say Kevin Smith lied or something like that, right? Show the video, right? If you are calling someone out, you have to show evidence. If you don't have any evidence, then there's no reason to be outraged, right? There's nothing for that, right? Second thing, uh, don't, you know, insult people. Don't curse at them and that kind of stuff, right? Third thing, don't act like you're better than someone else just because you aren't that upset, right? Don't lord it over like, you know, Janie Murdoch did, right? Again, don't go after Janie Murdoch because she's come out and she's better than um, all the Twitter people or fandoms or whatnot. The main thing that should be focused on, right, is that, you know what, Kevin Smith, you know, did lie and, you know, and that may have affected um, how He-Man, no, it, no, it did affect how He-Man was received. Like I said before, if he came out and said, hey, you know, I wasn't that big of a fan, but when I went back and I looked through it, I was like, hey, there's a lot here I can do with as a story. I really like this character, Tila. She really interests me, right? And then went off from there. I think the reaction would have been different because from what I can tell from uh, Geeky Sparkles, there was a lot of people who did like Tila, right? And you know, could have done something with that, right? But because he didn't do it that way and because of the way this was marketed, right? Hollywood marketing at its best, right? Uh, that's what happens. Um, yeah, hope you did enjoy this uh, <laughs> overview of my Twitter beef with random people. Uh, I wish I recorded some of the other ones because uh, – <laughs> I kind of got blocked by some professional people. Just and the thing is, is like, as you can see, I'm not exactly, um, you know, raging at people, to say at the very least. Uh, but <laughs> yeah, this has been Tabula Rasa. I hope you did enjoy this uh, Twitter thing. Maybe I'll make it anything if a lot of people like it. But enjoy. I hope you have a good day or good evening. Ciao, everybody.